Welcome back to the Gun Dungeon, guys. Got a little different video lined up for you today. It's another gel test, but we've got some oddball ammo here. It is nine millimeter, but this is Civil Defense. Nine millimeter plus P, 50 grain, 2,000 feet per second. That's their claim. So I definitely am using the chronograph. I'm gonna see if they get close to that 2,000 feet per second like they claim. This is a all copper bullet, so no lead core. 50 grains going that fast in a nine millimeter, all copper. I believe they advertise it, maybe it's frangible. No, but I'm gonna bet it's probably frangible. I don't see it anywhere on the, on the box here. Yeah, it says deep cavity projectile. Claims 12 inches of penetration at 10 feet. We'll see. I'm gonna bet, even though I have two blocks set up, I'm gonna bet I don't need that rear block. I know they only claim 12 inches, but uh, I'll be surprised if they get 12 out of that. It just seems too light and too fast to, to do that. But we'll go ahead and get everything set up here and shoot some jail, guys. So there's our velocity, 1,880 feet per second. Jail went for, or jail, jail block Jim went for, he went for a dance on that one. And I have to say, that's a pretty catastrophic looking wound cavity. Check that out. A lot of fragmenting right there. Looks like it just, it, it was frangible like I thought it would be. And got some petals spitting off. And then you can see the base just kind of flat lines for some penetration. But I, you know, that's pretty catastrophic, the front of it. And from the top, you can see quite a bit of petals over here. And then our tape measure there on the top, you can see the leading edge just over 10 inches, about 10. I'm gonna say 10 and an eighth is where the leading edge of that bullet is. So I didn't figure we would make the 12 and knew we, we wouldn't get much more than that if we did, but shallow penetrator, pretty pretty hard hit at the front there. That, that wound tract that kind of looks like a bloom there, it extends out to, starts at about the one inch mark and goes to close to the four inch mark. So about a two and three quarter to a three inch wound track there that looks pretty tough. Let's put Jim and some denim back up here and do a couple more shots. One thousand nine hundred and seventy five. What is that is scooting? It's consistent. I will give it that. Look at those petals. Just it just fragments off of, from the rear. I don't know if you can see it, but like from here when I shot it and the denim fell off, it looks like a star. So it's consistent in shedding its petals. And then there's that base. You can see there that little tiny base. I'm never going to get these dug out. So, uh, don't be expecting to see these laying on the table after this. That right there is crazy. It just looks like a watch battery, but that's, that's massive fragmentation for a nine millimeter handgun. So you can see that bloom, about the same as the first one. Consistent, like I said. This one went a little bit deeper. This one comes in 10 and a half to the leading edge. That's where it stops at. So still under penetrating, but let's put the denim and gem up and do one more shot. I'll try to hit a little higher on this one. So my chrono's showing a duplicate. It may be an error, maybe not, but at this point I'm not, I kind of got an idea about where the velocities is. Hit a little higher, not as high as I wanted to, 
but it did hit a little higher but we've just got a mess going on here now and again consistent performance little jackets and pedals and fragment everywhere denim drug in there and the top one there that's our watch battery that's left it looks like just clean cuts coming off that thing too it doesn't look there's any jagged edges on those little bases but take the tape measure back up here just for shits and giggles that one stopped more along the lines of the first one come in right at 10 inch maybe a little over 10 and eighth or so but let me say this just fyi i forgot to put my left ear down so i had my right ear covered up with the muff left ear was up where i were where i was talking to you on the last clip and i let that puppy rip and holy that is loud ear is still ringing all right, so I'm not going to try to dig those out and show you the bullets. Uh, they just evaporated into nothing but small watch batteries. Not going to dig those out. Matter of fact, cleaning that block is going to be a pain in the hind end. But would I carry these? I mean, I would if it's what I had. Would I pay what I paid for for these to carry them? No. I gave, it was, it was expensive. I want to say it was like, over two dollars and fifty cents a shot for these and to me that's 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 entirely you can't train with that you can't practice with that i'm not even sure where the point of impacts are because i'm shooting really close here i would have to shoot them enough to know where they're hitting you know point of impacts changing a lot whatever for me i'm probably going to stick with a traditional style bullet in a in a traditional weight for the nine millimeter and that's just my opinion yeah i'm sure these are lethal i'm sure i mean you can see catastrophic results right on the entry but for me I, I don't know how these would do with bone you know that that lightweight projectile hits bone that may be a game changer for that don't know all i know is that in my experience i tend to to lean more towards the traditional style bullets with traditional weights whereas the fad rounds like these and the rips kind of you know they have their applications don't get me wrong say you wanted to use them inside your house for, so that you know you don't get over penetration that may be an application for you not sure for me i don't know i definitely i don't think i'd pay the price of what i did for for these for to, to use all the time but your mileage may vary that's all I got for you today, guys. I hope you liked today's video. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe. And as always, stay tuned.